See, this idea is unfamiliar. And that's the difficulty of understanding it. That's all. It's a very simple idea. But it's an unfamiliar one, and it's an unfashionable one. Although, as I say, this sort of thinking is coming back to us at this time. One gets the perfectly uncanny feeling of the world and oneself as simply two phases of a single process. But when you get this kind of thinking, you want to go back and ask, why do people want to believe that man is irrelevant? When you, when you hear today people's comments on that old myth of man as the head of nature, they come back in a very funny way. They say, oh, that's the most conceited point of view. Man is part of nature. Yes, but why is it that the naturalists who think that man is part of nature are always fighting nature? It's because they don't understand what it means to be the head of nature. Every creature is the head of nature in its turn. And we all take turns because it's taking turns that makes the world go wrong. Every creature in its turn is the head of nature. Because each creature creates the world in its own image. Because all existence is a relationship. It's like the skin of the drum. If it's not there, it will no, no amount of hitting the non-existent skin will produce any noise. So you see, energy is, uh, we can see this, energy is relationship. We can see the falling fist and the skin of the drum, boing, like that. And if there isn't both the falling fist and the skin, no noise, no existence. But existence is not only the impact of rocks upon each other. Existence requires, always as its third, you can get the rocks knocking, the sun and the moisture. The tree crashing to the ground. But it, it, it takes this complexity of pattern to evoke the world.